I'm on a quest to unlock all the achievements on every single Resident Evil game. That means the good ones, the okay ones, and the absolutely terrible ones. On this video, we're continuing our journey with... Resident Evil Code Veronica was developed by Capcom. It was originally released for the Dreamcast on the 3rd of February 2000. It then had a HD remaster released in September 2011 for both PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. The game has a total of 12 achievements. The way I'm going to be tackling these is to first do a playthrough and unlock as many achievements as I can. I'll then take on battle mode where I have to achieve an A rank in each of the character's missions. And finally, I'll complete the game with an A rank which will unlock all the achievements. Code Veronica starts on the 27th of December 1998, three months after the events on Resident Evil 2 in Raccoon City. We play as a familiar Claire Redfield who's infiltrated an Umbrella Corporation facility in Paris in search of her brother, Chris. She's captured and imprisoned on Rockford Island and must escape after an outbreak of a T-virus. We also play as Chris Redfield later on, but we'll touch on that when we get to it. Like I said, there's 12 achievements to get, so let's get into it. Welcome to your new home. Oh, that wasn't very nice. Trespassing in our Paris lab facility 10 days ago. What the hell was that moan? Like, why is she moaning like that? It's freaking me out. Just as a heads up, every cutscene in this game is absolutely painful to watch. But long story short, this is how she got captured. Why is she like... What have you just got me playing here? <laughs> no, please don't. What on earth? Don't move. Well, she's in the hamster cage. When the game starts, the mysterious man that imprisoned Claire appears to be injured, and even though Claire watches him walk over to the cell, she decides to be low-key racist and act surprised that we couldn't see him in the dark. He says we're free to go, but warns us that we won't make it off the island alive, but misses out the important reason why. This is where we take over as Claire, but first, we have to learn the controls. Oh no, it's tank controls. Right, how'd I pick shit up? X. Ugh. Okay, so I run like that. Okay. Why is map? Oh god, the buttons are so strange. After learning how to control our vehicle Claire, we unlocked our first achievement. It's called the Terror Begins, which is for escaping the Graveyard of Terror. Rodrigo Juan Arabel. Whoa, you fucker! Ah, briefcase. Uh oh. Um. What the fuck? Oh no, they're everywhere. Come on, Claire, sort it out. Oh my god, there's fucking hundreds. Whoa! What the fuck? How'd I get him off me? How'd I get. No! Get off! the hell? Through the star? I don't know. Achievement! The terror begins. Escape from a graveyard of terror. Now you can probably tell by the low amount of achievements compared to the other Resident Evil games that this video is going to be quite different from the other ones I've done. With not many achievements to dive into, we're going to be focusing more on the story and the cutscenes as some of them are hilarious. And it's all because of one person. Wait, what's going on? I looked away for a second. Where? Don't shoot. Who are you? You're not a zombie. Sorry about that little misunderstanding. Moving Sorry for that little misunderstanding. I was emptying a fucking 50 cal turret into you. I said I was sorry. My name's Sorry. Claire. Claire Redfield. Claire. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> I'll remember that. Oh, this guy's freaking me out. There's an airport around here. I'll see ya. After nearly being turned into pink mist by Steve, we killed the zombie and got a new weapon. Holy shit. Oh, I'm hitting the wall. Oh, there's more behind me. Oh, what? No! Get off! No! They're fucking digging into me. I smashed his head. <laughs> I've got double easies. 
What the fuck? Look like paintball guns. Let's test these bad boys out. Oh, they're like Uzi pistols. It wasn't long though until we bumped into Steve again. Does that happen now? Oh no, it's fucking Steve. Chris Redfield. Is he a relative of yours or something? It's so hard to well, listen to him. And... <laughs> Why don't you send your brother the coordinates and ask him to come help? Thanks. I'll do that. No way. He won't come. You'll just end up disappointed if you rely on others. The fuck's his problem? Me. I know. What the actual fuck was that about? What was that all about? I know, Claire. Jeez. What a strange little prick. If you're wondering if this whole video is pretty much going to be memeing Steve the whole way through, then you're right. His character and scenes are pretty tough to watch, but trust me, it gets a lot worse. So stand by for even more cringe. But after obtaining the fire extinguisher, it's time to head back to the graveyard to get the briefcase. What the fuck? Down, boy. I feel like I've used way too much ammo here. Oh, there you are. Oh. The briefcase contained a metal plate that we have to use on this machine where Steve had his little hissy fit. This creates an emblem that we can use on the front gear to unlock it to access the next area. The problem, however, is that we had to leave our weapons behind at the entrance since there's a metal detector at the door which locks the room if triggered. Oh no! Oh, they're in now. Missed me! Ah, missed me! That wasn't too bad. After being munched by some dogs, we entered the palace. The aim of this section is to find three navy emblems that we have to insert into this machine that will grant us access to the airport to get off the island. This section is filled with a lot of puzzles. There's one door in the safe room that requires these Luger pistols you have to insert as a key to unlock it, but the issue is that when you try and collect them, this happens. <gasps> Shit. What's going on? Beep, boop, beep, boop. Wait, I'm getting cooked. Wait, I need to put these back. Grab the wheel. Wait, what, what wheel? Oh, that wheel. But it's not even shining. Steering wheel. I wasn't too sure how to get these Lugas without cooking to death. If only I had some kind of trusty wingman. Yeah! Help me! Fuck's that Randall off recess. What? 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 What's going on? Steve, where are you, bro? The gun room. Fuck. To the gun room. Steve, I'm coming. He's cooking to death. Hold on, Steve. Okay. I need those. Give them to me. Give them to me. Be kidding. I found it, and I'm keeping it. Hey, wait, Steve! Since Steve stole the Lugas and ran off, we used the steering wheel to get access to the submarine. After using the crane to move this crate, we can activate this lift. Oh shit! Oh my fucking god. Wait, how'd that run again? Okay, there. Okay. It's Uzi time, motherfuckers. Boy, why is he so fast? Oh, this is, this is pretty satisfying. By getting this biohazard card, we can access the other part of the facility. But this is where we met one of the main antagonists of the game. I am Alfred Ashford, commander of this base. Oh? This guy's a bell end. Who do you work for? Who sent you? Why is he asking me a question? I'm trying to blow my fucking head off. He's camping. Been playing too much Call of Duty. And he still fucked it up. Oh, fuck. Oh, ran. Oh, no. Skill issue. Did I close him down? Did I just rugby tackle him? Oh, he's ran away like a bitch. Consider the area you are in a special playground I have prepared just for you. I might have to get a Jack Daniels out, you know, for this shit. What was that laugh? What the fuck? What a little fucking troll. After chasing Alfred, we entered the safe room. You can find this hermostatic medicine, which is required for another achievement. It's called Duty and Humanity, and to unlock this, we need to deliver some medicine to a man in need. Oh, is that the... I need that medicine for the achievement, don't I? I need to give this to our boy, Rodrigo. At the start of the game, when the guard let you go, he gives you a clue that the medicine is for him by throwing his empty bottle on the floor. You don't have to do this right away, but I headed back to give him it so it was out of the way. 
Hey, little dude. What are you doing here? I've got some ecstasy, man. Hemostatic medicine. How kind of you. No. Thanks. Ecstasy. Don't worry about me. Yes, duty. Duty and humanity. Deliver some medicine to the man in need. Now we returned to the facility and picked up these random Uzis. I don't know why this game's obsessed with dual wield Uzis. But after this, we get introduced to a new enemy. The fuck is that ball sack? What the f- Run! Oh, he spanked my ass. You naughty little ball sack. Hey, fuck off. Why is he barking? Okay. I'm okay, I'm okay. Oh my fucking god. There's another ball sack. Oh, he's about to teabag me. Oh, Leonardo DiCaprio, come on. Like, one's here and one's up there. Go on, son, fuck it up. Go on. Yes, of course, the kick is what done it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that felt good. Don't worry, Claire. Your knight in shining armor is here. Oh, man, he's such a human ick. Here, take these. <laughs> Machine guns? For me? Man, I want the fucking Uzis. Fuck off. <laughs> All right. Oh man, I hate him. I can't. I... <laughs> hey. Even Claire's laughing. I can't, man. I can't play this. Up there, plenty of ammo. Just for you. Why is that music playing? Just... To test out my new toy. <laughs> In this part of the game, we take over as Steve. He wants to be Alpha and impress Claire, and this is where we can unlock our next achievement, which is to receive encouragement from a young lady. All you have to do is, when you take over as Steve, is turn around and head back into the room where Claire is. We're going back in. What's wrong, cold feet? <laughs> oh my god, she's just... <laughs> she just absolutely slammed him down and made him just walk out in shame. Now that we're induced with rage, it's time to fuck things up with Steve. Oh, nice. But this area is now clean. See? You can depend on me. Steve, See? she's not gonna fuck you, okay? Why does this music just randomly come in? Who brought you here and where is your family? Shut up! <laughs> I don't want to talk about it! Steve has got some serious daddy issues. Never mind. Yeah, just never mind about that weird episode we just had there, yeah? That's something you need to address. Oh, it gets much worse. Fuck me. Can it even get worse? Is that possible? After Steve's weird little outburst, we can unlock our next achievement, which is to liberate the changed man. Something bad. Oh, shit. Steve, behind you. Oh, no. Oh, he's ugly. Shoot him. No. Come on, Steve. What's wrong, Steve? Shoot him! Wait! I... I can't! <laughs> no! Oh, God, shush. Steve! See, Steve? You snooze, you lose. No. The Alpha's coming to take Claire off you. Hey, open your eyes. Why is Claire just lying there taking it? Oh, it's his daddy. Ah! Mate, you're gonna shoot Claire. Fucking chill out. How's Claire still alive? <laughs> oh, this game. What the fuck? Father. Father. <laughs> yes. 
A changed father. He's changed, alright. He's fucking dead. He's gone from undead to dead. Now that we've traded weapons with Steve after he decided to excessively spray his father into the afterlife, we now have the Lugas we can use on the aforementioned door in the safe room to access the next area. A lot of ball sacks in this area. Oh, fuck me. Going to the Pornhub Palace, am I? Okay, you weren't kidding. I'm about to get fucking donkey punched by a massive yellow cock. Yep. I like how we've just called them ball sacks now. <laughs> That's just what they're known as. And after another weird cutscene with Alfred, we found a key that could be used in the palace, and that gets us an Eagle Hawk emblem. There was a lot of you that requested this game, and since this was my first ever playthrough, I had no idea where to go for a large portion of the game. I'll happily admit that this is by far the hardest Resident Evil game I've done so far in terms of working out where the hell I go. The thing about this game is it doesn't really give you too many clues on what to do next, and you can easily skip past the puzzle that's required to complete the next section. Unlike our newer Resident Evil games that are much more linear, the newer game's map tends to tell you when you've picked up all the items in an area, or you've explored every option in a room. But on Code Veronica, if you miss an item or you don't pay attention to detail, you might miss a subtle clue that would help you work out what you need to do next. Even if that means backtracking all the way to the start of the game. Luckily though, I had two awesome viewers called Hoff and Burge helping me. These two are diehard fans of the game and even though they couldn't remember exactly what to do every step by step, it was a trip down memory lane for these guys trying to remember where to go next, so it was a genuine pleasure having them there as we try to complete the game. Oh no. Okay, I'm resetting my room. Fuck that shit. Oh, the doctor. The doctor. Doctor must have lost his patience. <laughs> Do you get it? Oh, his mate's getting up as well. Now that we have a piano roll, we're going to head back to the palace and insert it into this piano. This is where we got our next achievement for meeting a familiar foe. Greetings. Oh no. You must be the lovely. That's got to be Wesker. Yeah. Here he is. Let's just say that I'm a ghost coming back to haunt your dear brother. Wesker? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Wesker. Now that the cat dragged in this nice surprise. Cat. So My cat's gone. Wesker's got king. I despise Chris. Oh damn. <laughs> Fucking Dragon Ball Z sent him flying across the room. What is it? Stay there. I'm coming. Well, that was interesting. Beyond the shades. Encounter a former stars captain. Ah, uh, here we have a piano. Yep, yep, you know. King and object. <gasps> That's the last one. Hold it right there. I am Alexia Ashford. For the pride of the Ashford family, I will kill you. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, Steve. Go on. Go on, Steve! Steve. Wait, what? Uh, after her. Steve, you're injured! It's just a scratch. I mean, it's not you. She got shot in my arm, you stupid little bell end. <laughs> Go on, Steve, what you got, son? Uzi him. Why does he look like he's taking a shit? Why does he sound like he's having a shit? After recovering from the trauma of that cutscene, we take all three emblems out and head to the machine to insert them. <laughs> that laugh. It hurts. Oh, what the fuck is this? Let's go. Uh oh. Hey, what the the cargo room patch is open. I'll go back and check it out. Right, let's fucking see. How the fuck did I even get in here, by the way? Great! He's got a weird little nail. 
cop already. Have I done it? Ah, fuck you. Yes. A fallen tyrant. Screw you, you little dickhead. The plane just changed direction on its own. It's flying in autopilot mode. But I cannot let you escape now. <laughs> Alfred, you cross-dressing freak. Oh, damn. All right, Claire, try not to get cancelled. Guy's freaky, man. Please don't do something creepy, I can't. This is hard to watch. What the fuck? I feel like that was almost rip. There was literally no consent there whatsoever. We've now landed at the Antarctic base, and this is where Steve decides to make a move. Oh, Steve, you little creep. I can't stand this guy. Holy fuck, man. <laughs> Look at him. He's fucking jizzed in his pants. Jizz in my pants. See, look, he's had, he's had post-nut clarity. <laughs> let's split up and he's had post-nut clarity. He's like, right, let's split up. I don't need you anymore. Not too much happens in this part. You're basically just reactivating the power to get to the next section. But we did randomly find a new weapon. Is <laughs> that fucking AK? <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. Things are going pretty smooth. That was, however, until Steve decided to fuck everything up. Look at him staring at our ass. Fucking perv, man. <laughs> He's so creepy. Oh, Steve, you little melt. It's all my fault. I was too busy admiring your ass. Luckily, you can find a gas mask so you can enter the rooms. After solving another puzzle, we find out the messed up truth behind the disappearance of the Ashford family member, Lord Alexander. Oh, no. The fuck? The hell? Oh, damn. That is some mad-ass bondage. Make him stop. Shut up. After we cleaned up Steve's mess and shut off the gas, it's time to make our escape. This is also where we can get our next achievement. Big up Lee Oh no, he's coming for me. I'm scared, son. I'm fucking scared. Come on, let's go. What are you scared? Oh no. Here he is. Oh fuck. Whoa. Whoa. No! <laughs> Forget about me. Run. Foxy spunking me with. Oh fuck, I'm poisoned. Oh, he's down, he's down, he's down. The prisoner who lost everything! Defeat of a nameless man and end his suffering. <gasps> it's Chris! We're now on the second half of a game where we play as Chris, who's ironically came to find Claire after the whole premise of the game originally was that Claire was trying to find him. We're back on Rockford Island since that's the location he received from Leon when Claire reached out to him at the start of the game. The emblem we need to open this door is the one we inserted with Claire previously. Once you spot it, it falls down into the sewers, so that's what we're going to be working towards in this section. The last thing Alfred did before he died was release Alexia, and this is where Wesker sees us on the CCTV. He sends out these drones to find us and are spread out throughout the facility. Some of them are avoidable, but if you do get spotted by one, they send out our favourite enemy from the whole series. Ah, oh, fuck. Uh-oh. Oh, I've missed. Mate, what? 
I have to aim down. That is bullshit. After fighting an onslaught of hunters because we kept walking into the drone's vision, we did eventually get the tank model that can be used in this room to reveal the next puzzle. You'll probably recognise these three slots. We need to find the three navy emblems again that we collected originally as Claire. In Chris's section, you're pretty much reversing the steps of Claire and solving a couple different puzzles. But just make sure you have enough space to pick up the three emblems once you get there. Also, don't forget your healing items since you'll be surrounded by hunters. I fucked up. It's out of ammo. I'm in danger. Oh my fucking god. I cannot fuck this up. Oh my god. Once we've got the navy emblems and we insert them into the slots, it will turn off a laser so we can activate this lever. This leads down to where the emblem is, but there's one problem. Ah, fuck. Run, Chris! Right, okay. Now that we have the key, we can use it on this door and we unlock our next achievement. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, to the frozen land! We're now at the Antarctic base. It's just a case of finding Claire in this scenario, but after reaching a replica version of a Spencer Mansion, I was completely stuck. At this point, I'm about nine hours into a stream and my mind was delirious trying to work out where to go next. And that was even with the main men, Half and Birch, trying to give me the most obvious of clues. behind the damn steps. What steps? The main mansion room. <laughs> I'd be tearing out. <laughs> oh shit. It's Claire. She's fainted inside the cocoon. I need some kind of tool to open it. What what tool? What? I don't have the tool. <laughs> Alright, I know where there's a knife. There's a knife up here. I don't, I don't think a knife would work on that. I thought I'd need some kind of fucking goo. Fucking like a remedy potion or some shit. Do I equip it or use? Okay, I use. <laughs> Can't believe I've done this all by myself. No! Oh shit. Steve. Just go. I'll be fine. We now take back over as Claire for a short period. All we have to do is interact with this cannon that will drop a crystal ball. And then all you need to do with this is... My intrusive thoughts took over. Okay, you can probably tell what you need to do here. And after doing this, we can unlock our next achievement. It's called the Green Giant and it's for saying farewell to a fallen comrade. Okay, what's going on here? It's our boy Steve, what's wrong? Steve? Uh, who did this to you? That Surely, <laughs> he can just crawl she under that. Perform the same experiment on me that she did on her own father. Uh, oh shit. Uh, uh, what's wrong? Oh no. Uh, 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 Oh damn. Oh fuck. Oh no, Steve, he's turning alpha. Oh, he's green. It's the unincredible Hulk. Oh. Oh damn. Oh my god, he's at peace. Oh man. I, I don't want to fuck with you, bro. That was his weapon all along. Oh, what? Oh, shit! Oh! Run! Run, Claire! Fuck! Heal, 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 heal. Run! Oh. Claire, why aren't you running? It's gonna break through. Um, yeah, 
Claire, why did you just hang around? Oh no. It's turning into some kind of weird anime pawn. Steve's getting what he wanted. Chris, help me. Oh no. The power of love's taking over. Come on, Steve. He's fighting the virus. Oh, Steve, why did you turn green? Oh, he's back human. He's all right. Nope, oh, he's, he's cringe again. You're warm. Your brother kept his promise. <laughs> I'm sorry, I cannot. What? What are you saying? I'm glad that I met you. Oh, man, this is painful I... to just listen to. Don't say it. Don't say it. I love you. Claire. That is a tough watch. That is a very tough watch. That was a tough watch. That was... I got an achievement, but that was... That was just, just... After Steve turned into a giant cucumber, we take back over as Chris. I found you, Alexia. Oh, fuck. She's turning into a... A gigamilf. Ah. Oh. Some fucking Medusa. Go on, Wasker, son. Wasker, surely you've got a gun, right? Chris! Chris! How do I know? She literally just looks like a fire medusa. Oh, that's a nice compliment. Thank you. Run! Chris is like, fuck this, I'm out. Oh, never mind. I'm trapped. Hey, no! Fuck! Oh, I've got like no health as well, man. No, fire! No, come on! Nah, half it, it's over. She's got me. Like, I'm, I'm literally about to be executed. No, don't reload! Fuck! Fuck! Oh, I've downed her. Is she dead? There's fucking fire! Fire! Chris! We pick up and insert the last jewel that Alexei dropped into this picture, and this unlocks a secret passage to Claire's location. Oh no! <laughs> Claire? Is that you, Claire? Door won't open! There should be a self destruct system somewhere. If you activate it, all the electronic locks might be deactivated. It's <laughs> a very wild assumption. We're now at the last section of the game and all we have to do is put the dragonfly key in here. Which I didn't have. Remember when I said this game doesn't give you any clues you've missed something and you can progress too far without realising? Well it turns out I missed out a couple of things. After running around aimlessly for 30 minutes with Avon Burge and half not remembering what to do, we finally realised what we missed. You have to take the tie guys and use them on the music boxes. Right, okay, 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 okay. There's a statue that when you grab one of these two jewels, it will turn around and prevent you from grabbing the other one. It gives you a hint that it runs off electricity, so that's when we realised we had to quickly go turn off the power, grab these two jewels, insert them into the music boxes ages away, and this opens a secret passage to get the last dragonfly I needed. The body turned out to just be in one of the side rooms, but now that we have our newly constructed dragon key, we can use it to activate the self-destruct sequence, and then it's time to face the final boss. Oh. Oh! 
Just go for the emergency elevator! Like, if I didn't shoot her there, would Claire have just died? What the fuck is that? Fuck. Man, fuck off. Fuck off. Man. I'm stun locked. I'm stun locked. I can't move. I'm just stun locked to fuck. I can't move. I'm dead, aren't I? I couldn't move, man. What the fuck? Oh. I hit it. I hit it. Come on, fuck it up, Chris. Ow. Yes. Nope. Fuck. No. Nope. Nope. Fucking stay still, you piece of shit. Oh, nope. it's so slow. Right, I'm gonna aim to where she's going. Aha! Okay, it's like space invaders. You let them move into you. Getting a bit awkward, wasn't it? We've killed her. Move. The arrogant queen. Claire. No. <laughs> oh. But just look at the power I've gained. You made me bleed my own blood. Oh my god, you made him do a fucking backflip. Ha <laughs> Ah, oh, he's still getting up. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, I thought I was gonna squish him. Next time we meet, don't count on another. Run, Chris. <laughs> Gotta wait for this lift. <laughs> Chris. Hey, you know that I always keep my promises. <laughs> oh god. Let's finish this once and for all. Oh dear. <laughs> A D. I mean, I'll take the D for once in my life. For 11 hours 20 minutes. Now that we've completed the game, we're only left with two achievements. We're going to go for the Battlemaster achievement where we have to unlock the Linear Launcher. To do this, we need to play through Battle Mode, which is an extra mode you unlock once you complete the game. In this game mode, you have to kill all the enemies in every room. Each character has their own specific loadout. There's two for Claire, one for Chris, one for Steve, and once you complete them, you unlock a final one for Wesker. The challenge that lies ahead is that we have to get an A rank in each of these scenarios. To get an A rank, we need to finish the mission in a set amount of time, and these are not really forgiving at all. There's almost no room for error, and depending on whose scenario it is, your loadout can be awful. First, we're going to start off with Claire. There's two main issues when trying to go for an A rank. One is actually knowing where to go. No, oh, it's locked. I don't know where to go. Is this where I just came from? I don't know. Luckily, the rooms are the exact same for everyone's scenario. The only difference is the loadout and the boss fight at the end. So over time, I learned which doors I had to use and not waste valuable seconds trying to go through the wrong door. However, the main issue I had was with the camera angle. At times, I wasn't sure if all the enemies were actually dead, and this would waste a lot of time as you can't enter the next room unless all enemies have been killed. I must defeat the monster. What monster? Oh, this monster. That's one I fucking kill. Surprisingly, I found it best to use first person mode. Although it feels weird and clunky playing the game like this, you can at least see the enemies ahead of you, so you know whether you've cleared a room before you stop shooting, meaning you can just focus on going through the correct doors. Eight minutes thirty, holy shit, that is <laughs> That is awful. I got a fucking E rank. An E. 
Jesus. Wait, I need to sort that out. Please die! I think I've done it, I think I've done it! Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you! This is where Birch goes. Bosh! I mean, there's still three more to go, so... <laughs> Claire's B mission I thought was going to be a lot easier since you had the grenade launcher, but the final boss was proving to be a problem. Oh, you got hit off the edge. <laughs> Don't worry, Burge. That won't be happening to me. <laughs> yep, uh, Burge, it happened to me as well. <laughs> he just fucking yeeted me off the map. Jesus, man. All that just for that. You can clear through the main stage easy since you have a grenade launcher, but working out a tactic for the final boss was the tricky part. Why aren't you hitting him? Am I hitting him? My issue is I don't know how much fucking health he's got. Well, can we just appreciate that I haven't been knocked off the edge yet, yeah? Where have I killed him? I've done it! I've fucking done it! Eh, we got an air rank. Let's fucking go. Steve's scenario was actually quite difficult. His auto aim on the Uzis were very inconsistent. Sometimes he would just randomly spray out to the side, shooting no one. Steve, what are you aiming at? Steve, I hate you. Steve, I really hate you. Steve, I despise you. Wish Steve is best to get up as close as possible. Die, fuckers. If you feel like your aim isn't locking on, just let go of the trigger and re-aim and this should re-lock onto the enemy most of the time. Fuck! Come on, I can't fuck this up. Yes! I think I've done it, I think I've done it. Please! Why Steve's dad looks so like he's made out of wax? A rank, we've done it! Chris's scenario was by far the easiest. He's got an unlimited magnum and in first person view you can just wipe out everything in practically one shot. Oh, oh that is satisfying. Triple kill. The final boss can be a bit clunky because you're not sure whether your bullets are actually hitting them, but I did manage to get the A rank on my first try. Fuck. I've only got 10 seconds. Oh, I've done it! I wasn't sure if I was hitting that. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Just call me. Wesker. <laughs> By far the hardest and most time consuming is definitely Wesker's. For some reason, the only weapon he has is a knife, and the thought of dealing with all the hordes of zombies, poisonous hunters, and then the final boss we face is going to be an absolute nightmare. Why couldn't he just have laser vision like he did on RE0? Oh my god. The only plus side to Wesker's scenario is that you have up to an hour to complete it. This means you don't have to focus on the time and you can just go as slow as you need to. The worst part about all this though is that even if you were lucky enough to make it to this point, this room just before the final boss has a slot machine. It will spawn either a magnum, literally the strongest weapon in the game, or it will spawn a diary. Pretty much crucial that you get the magnum because the last fight is the one with Alexia and she has an insta-kill attack if you get too close. Yeah, okay. From what I read online, there's about an 80% chance to get a magnum, so my odds were pretty good. <laughs> I'm gonna look at your reaction chat, okay? Is it a magnum? Please. It's not, is it? What's the fucking spawn rate of this piece of shit magnum? Yeah, like, what the fuck, man? After being extremely tilted, raging beyond belief, I was about to end stream. And then I thought, I'll give it one more go.
Here we go, people. Are we ready? I'm worried about my mental state. Yes! Right, we just need to not fuck this up. Yes! Fuck you. She dead? Yes! Oh my god. We've done it. We've fucking done it. We've done it, we've done it, we've done it. Please. Give me that achievement. We've unlocked it. And there's a fucking achievement. Let's go, Battlemaster. Get the linear launcher from Battle Game. Holy heck. Battle mode was now complete and we're now on to the last achievement. The last achievement is called Weapon Crazy and it's for unlocking the rocket launcher. To get this, we need to complete the game with an A rank, which requires us to do six things. First, we have to complete the game in under four and a half hours. Considering my first playthrough took just under 12, I had my work out for me. Second, we can't save the game. The only save you can use is the one at the halfway point of the game where you take over as Chris. Three, you can't use any retries. If you die, you have to start again and if you work lucky enough to reach it to the halfway point of the game you have to load your save and continue from there four you have to give a hermostatic medicine to rodrigo that's easy to do but just make sure you don't forget five you have to save steve as fast as possible when he's trapped in the palace there's a specific cutscene you need for the a rank to unlock the good thing about code veronica is that there's no difficulty settings so the playthrough itself won't be any easier or harder as long as you know where you're going or just have a guide on the side everything should go smooth that is until you get to steve okay steve just be nice, okay? Oh no, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck in the corner. I genuinely can't move. <laughs> what have I done? Run! <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> oh, I thought I was fucked. Oh my god. I thought I was literally fucked in that corner. There's no point showing you the full run. Like I said, it is the same difficulty the whole way through. Once you've done it the first time and you follow a guide, apart from Cucumber Steve, there isn't really any hard parts. And before we knew it, we were at the final boss. Oh, she's going like up and down and shit. There we go. Please, be the end. A rank, fucking get in. Three hours 44, where's the achievement? Rocket launcher unlocked. There we go. We've done it. We've done it. And that's it, people. We've wrapped up all the achievements for Resident Evil Code Veronica, and it's time to break down the stats. Like we said at the start, there's a total of 12 achievements. The completion time took me around 20 hours. This could be more or less depending on how your first run goes, and how you get on with battle mode. Difficulty-wise, I will give this a 7 out of 10. The challenge lies fully on battle mode. Since the main story doesn't have a difficulty setting, that means you don't have to worry about doing a hard difficulty playthrough, which is traditionally the more difficult achievements to get in Resident Evil games. However, Wesker's battle mode mission was an absolute nightmare, so that's why he gets a 7. Overall, Overall, I'll give this game a 7 out of 10. This was my first ever playthrough of a game and considering how old it is, I actually really enjoyed it. Although some scenes were painful with Steve, the gameplay itself was amazing. If this game gets a remake like it's rumoured to, I honestly think this could be one of the best Resident Evil games ever. I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you want to catch these videos live, feel free to check out my Twitch. But that's all from me. Peace out.